Welcome to Cross Border Interviews. We sit down with local elected leaders from all corners of Canada. Now, over the course of this episode, we'll be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they're working to make their community a better place for everyone. Today, we are honored to be sitting down with the town of Lumsden, Saskatchewan's mayor, Brian Matherson. But before we get into today's episode, if you could, please hit that subscribe button or follow button wherever you're listening to this episode. It helps us get our message out in making municipal issues a priority across Canada. Now, on to the episode. Brian, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start with a general question, but it's an important question for the show. And that is, where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Brian? Well, that's a really good question. I suppose it, it certainly goes way back to my youth. Um, you know, my parents were very involved. My, my mother was a counselor back in when women weren't counselors very often. Um, certainly my, my coaching in, in some of my sports and, and education all said, you, you've got to, you should give back. And then I, I'm an educator by profession. And when I coached my kids, that was a, that was a real emphasis for me to say, you're not just here as a, as an athlete, you've got to give back to your sport to your school, whatever. And I think that's just carried on for me to my community. So I, I tried to do a, a little bit of research on you before we, we chatted. And from what I can gather, and correct me if I'm wrong, because the, the election dates are very confusing in Saskatchewan, but you get elected in 2002 as a councillor, correct? Correct. I think that was the right year, yeah. Oh, it said 2002, 2003. I'm not sure what that meant. So that's why I just took a guess and said 2002. So I've got to ask, what was happening in 2002, 2003, depending on what year you actually were sworn in, that you, Brian, finally said to himself, this is the time. This is the date. This is this is when I need to be on council because I believe that my voice is needed or there's an issue that's not being addressed that I think I should be bringing forward. Do you remember what that was? Yeah, absolutely. And probably circumstance more than anything. We had a situation where there was a by-election and I was getting near the end of my professional career. Uh, I retired in 2003. So uh, at the time I said, I'm not sure that this is for me, but I can run now and, and have a two-year trial period to see if, if, I, if it fits. Um, there wasn't anything glaring that that i wanted to do that i had in mind it was just i've been involved in administration for quite a bit and i think i thought maybe i had something to provide you said it was a trial period for two years but you stay on from 2002 to 2006 what did you learn about yourself as a municipal councillor during that time? Because you take there's a brief hiatus in your election where from 2006 to 2010, either you step away or something comes up. And then in 2010, you run for mayor. So what 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 did you learn about yourself in those uh, those early years as a municipal councillor, particularly at the local level? Yeah, I, I uh, certainly enjoyed my time. Uh, the mayor at that time, Vern Barber, was very uh, accommodating. You know, he did a good job of running council. Uh, I felt very involved as the, as a councillor, and I, I just felt I provided some good service to to the community. The reason I I stepped away was because I uh, I, I got a job actually at the golf course up in Waskasu, and and so I was up there all summer long, and I wasn't able to commit to doing my job as a counselor uh, properly. And so I said, I, I need to step aside. Oh, good for you for acknowledging that because I can imagine that's probably the toughest decision that some people have to make is wanting to give back, but also realizing your limitations. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you can't do it properly, I didn't think I should be doing it. Other people, there's lots of other people who can do the job. So you, you, you've had an extensive career in municipal politics for those formative years as a councillor, and then from 2010 to now uh, as mayor. And 
I only get to ask this question to a certain amount of people because they haven't had the ability to have a career like yours. Has municipal government and the issues that face municipal government changed dramatically in the last 20 years from when you first were on council to what you're dealing with here and now in 2023? Dramatically, I'm not sure that it's it's dramatic. Um, but it's it has changed. It's different. How, how so? There's more wants. People want more. People <laughs> expect more, I think. Um, government is is big, big government and i'm not talking municipal i'm talking federal and provincial they are they download a lot they paperwork 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 and that's not for me as a counselor but for my cao and my staff um those things have changed the the expectations of what counselors or what uh, you know, what council is expected to do has changed so i don't know if it's dramatic but it certainly has changed has the apathy changed from the residents do people feel are people engaged because i remember in 2000 yeah. because that's when i started my journalism career people were engaged at the municipal level people were attending council meetings it's hard to find people like even like two or three people who want to go to a council meeting at a Tuesday night to listen to their councils debate a zoning bylaw or a budget. I find absolutely people are more engaged. I get more people talking to me today than I than I did. Um, <clears throat> you're right. We don't have very many people coming to council. <laughs> absolutely. The truth that. Uh, I hope it's because they think we're doing a good job and, and they don't need to come. But uh, I get lots of questions and our community is fortunate, I guess. Uh, we're a much younger community today than when I started in 2010. And so there are different, different I don't say requests, but different questions that are asked of me by younger people as compared to the the people that have lived in town for 50 years and it's the same old, same old. Um, so I, I'm very fortunate in our community. Uh, I think when I step aside, there's going to be all sorts of people that can fill my spot with ease. And, and so I'm, I'm comfortable with our community and, and the, the, um, I, I guess the appetite that people have for municipal government. When people do stop you, though, wh what are the issues that people are talking about? And I ask this question with a preface of saying, do they understand that the municipality has a role to play and there's jurisdictional rules and regulations that you have to follow within? Or are people talking to you about provincial issues, federal issues, educational issues? What are the issues that people are talking about? And are they related to the municipality? I would say yes. People are usually stopping me and saying, can we provide this? Can the community do this? Can, can Lumsden, we should, have you ever thought of doing this? Uh, they're looking for more, for our, our community to have more. And I don't get a lot of, of politics, if I can <laughs> use that term, um, in, in the questions. It's more about uh, what's happening here? How? Why is this happening? And and very accepting of my answers. And uh, what more can we have? Now there are people that say, "I want to complain. You guys are doing this wrong." I, I try and say to them, "The complaint department is, is uh, over at the corner there. I'm here for the problem solving divide department. So let's. What's your solution to your to your question?" So you, you bring up a good point, and I, I want to play in this sandbox for a little bit, if you don't mind, because I can imagine, you know, that after your career in politics, and you're still in it, I should say that, you know, you're not going to please 100% of the people. You are not going to please 100% of the people with all the decisions that you make on council. You may not hear about it, but you're never going to please people. Pe people may say the budget is too bloated. You're, you raise taxes on us. This zoning shouldn't have happened. You shouldn't have allowed this development in my area. You've heard the gambit. Yeah, You're right. People do come and complain. People do come and talk to you about the issues that they're facing. 
How much respect goes into that, though? Because you're there as their elected official to listen to the people who have put you there, whether through be it through elections or even for the people who didn't uh, vote for you. How much respect do you have to give people to say, OK, while it's great that you have an issue, like you said, what's the solution you want us to come up with? Because I can't come up with all of them. And we're, this is a community and not a one person team. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. We can't please everybody. I try and give everybody respect as long as they're respectful to me. I'm respectful to them. And I will try my best to justify, explain why we've done this. And I, I am fully aware and, and I'm fully willing to say, okay, I understand your concern. I understand your complaint, but we've done it this way and this is the way it's going to be. You know, I, I'm not, I don't try and please everybody. Why you not? can replace me. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Because you can't. And, and some people don't want, we've got the, the NIMBYs, the not in my backyard or the people. Really? In, in small town Saskatchewan, there's NIMBYism? Really? I'm, I'm not joking about that question. It's just, it doesn't seem like it would, because you have such vast land. Do you think people would want growth? Yeah, but you get into a situation where somebody says, uh, I, I would like to put my house as, a, as an Airbnb, and immediately somebody says, well, that, they could have a party next door. I don't want that in my neighborhood. Or, you know, the development across the road, uh, it's, I've got wide open spaces to look at. Now somebody's going to build a house there. I don't like that. NIMBY, NIMBYism is uh, alive and well, no matter where you go. Well, that just that just blew my mind because I, I've talked to a few of your fellow ca fellow colleagues across Saskatchewan, and you're the first one who's openly admitted that NIMBYism is there, huh? <laughs> now, now I have something to look forward to when they come to Suma in 2024 and ask the fellow mayors that question. Um, I, I want to talk about the government of proximity because you are the closest to the people. You make decisions that the day after you make them, they are impacting your residents. You don't go off to Regina. You don't go off to Ottawa to do your job. You are in your community 24-7. How do you balance that lifestyle as a local elected leader? Because I can imagine there's days that you just want to go outside and just be Brian. You just want to go out, grab a carton of milk and be Brian. But people will stop and talk to you because you've just openly admit that they do stop and talk to you. So how do you balance the life of a small town mayor in Saskatchewan to just be Brian sometimes? Or can you? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great question because even even when you go out in summer holidays and, and I go to the lake at Waska Sioux and, and go to the golf course, people know I'm the mayor of Lumsden. And, and so you're always going to be the mayor of Lumsden. Um, I'm very public. I'm very out in the public a lot. And I, I guess it's something you're going to have to live with when you take the job. Now, having said that, that means the decisions you make, you have to be able to justify. And, and people will say to me, well, are you going to raise the taxes? I'll say yes, immediately. Really? I say, absolutely. I You're say an honest them, politician. Expect... I'm, I'm not used to this whole conversation, Brian. You're an honest <laughs> politician who's willing to say you're going to raise taxes. Ooh, where have you been for the last year? <laughs> I've been doing this show. Uh, I, I say to them, are you, are, is, are you going to get a raise in your, in your pay? Yes, I am. I have to raise the taxes because if I don't raise the taxes for our town, we're falling behind. Uh, cost of living, everything is increasing. And so I have to raise your taxes, plain and simple. And most people, by far the, the majority, understand that. Now, that means that I try and keep that increase at a, at a steady, reasonable level. And, and not go crazy. Uh, and if I do go crazy, then I've got to justify that to everybody at the, at the local store or wherever I meet them on the street. 
So I want to turn to the issues because I think we're getting into a part of the conversation now that I want to start talking about this. And I want to preface it by saying this. For those who are listening right now, this is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a policy of council. This is not a direction of council. This is the mayor's opinion. Now, I, I've got to ask this question. You talk about the affordability crisis, which is pretty hard for a lot of people right now. You talk about uh, municipalities needing to do more with less because you don't have funding potentially that you need to cover the costs of the rising inflation. What do you see as the biggest issue facing the town of Lumsden today as of recording this episode? Future development is the biggest issue and that infrastructure I'm talking about as much as, as development. I think what we've tried to do with, with my councils, and I think we've been pretty successful is we've put money aside. We've tried to create reserves for all of our infrastructure, for our equipment, for our water and sewer, for, for whatever. So that when we get into the situation that we're in today, where inflation is crazy, we're able to dip into those reserves a little bit to cushion the immediate taxes that you would have to raise today to keep up with that inflation. Um, so that that's a real important thing for me. I think it's, it's one of the things that I'm most proud of is how we've been able to set up a really good reserve fund in our community. We've, I've tried to say with my councils right from the get go is we have to look to the future. If you, if you're just looking to solve today's problems, you're not going to be very successful. You're going to be putting out fires and putting out fires and putting out fires forever. You have to look to the future and, and plan for the future. So we've been able to do that. I think our, our council has tried to institute a best practice so that we're not doing it cheapest. We're doing it best. And so I think what's the biggest problem, biggest concern for Lumsden? We have to increase our waste, our water treatment plant because our, we're growing. We we just put in a twenty million dollar wastewater treatment facility that was a huge hit on our community. So that is is very expensive. And and moving into the future and, and the cost of doing that is is the big concern for Lumsden. Okay, so there's a few things I want to pick up on there, but I want to start with this. Um, you're right. Infrastructure is massively huge right now, especially with the affordability, especially with inflation. Over the last few years, have you had to delay projects or even stop projects from starting due to the uh, increased uh, price tag that comes along with these projects because I'm hearing from municipalities particularly with infrastructure projects that originally when they budgeted for it it was a two million dollar project now it's six million dollars and they don't know where they're going to come up with that four million dollar increase for Lumsden for you are you seeing that play out at your local level or with these reserves which I am going to be sort of snarky that Reserves are great, but you don't. You, reserves are not going to be the be, end all, be all of what you need to cover the costs. Right. Um, we yes, we've had to delay things. Now, some of the things we've had to delay have not been our doing. Whether it's government delays, whether it's engineering construction, that type of thing. And it's cost us more money for sure. But we we got into a situation, uh, I'll take this back about eight years, 10 years, eight years ago, where we were trying to do paving a street. And, and we had done um, local improvement and paving our streets throughout the, all throughout Lumsden's time prior to that. And this community, this street, the residents voted that out the third time and they, they petitioned it out. So we said, well, we can wait another year and paving was increasing at 20% or something like that, or we could just go do it and take it out of our reserves. And from that day forward, all paving in our community is paid for by everybody, uh, not local improvement. 
And so we made that choice to, to go ahead and do that paving that year. It saved us a lot of money. There was a lot of angst amongst people, but when you explained that when it's time to do your street, it's not gonna cost you a penny. Everybody's gonna chip in and pay. People bought into that for that purpose. So we've tried to, to look to the future, tried to look at what's the best practices. And, and at that particular time, that was the best thing to do. So our water plant, we're, we're planning right now, and it's gonna be built hopefully in about four years, three years, four years. If we got a grant tomorrow from the federal government, we'd start production immediately because we're ready. We, we know that we're gonna to have to borrow a little bit of money, but we try and make sure that we're ready for future development and well before it happens. And, and we're not trying to uh, say, okay, we have to do this tomorrow and we haven't done a darn thing yet. We've tried to plan ahead. Planning ahead is great. And I want to quote you here. You, you told your council and you've just said it a few times in that last statement, you want to look to the future. You're always looking to the future because you don't want to be putting out fires. But you know, and I know that there's issues that are here and now. There's issues that residents have to deal with here and now. So how do you balance that? How do you make that those tough decisions and say, we need to look to the future, but Jim's pothole in front of his house needs to be repaired. Johnny's park that's on his street needs to be upgraded or the pipe underneath ground, the infrastructure projects underground that we weren't planning for have to be upgraded as well. How do you balance the needs of the future with the needs of the here and now? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Correct. We had a situation last year where our, our uh, water and sewer budget, we were going to make, I think we were, going to make $24,000 profit. And in the last month, that catastrophe happened. It was a $25,000 bill and we had to do it. So plans that we said, okay, we're going to have money for the future. We're used up right now. And we have had situations like that. We, we have another one going that we are now budgeting for next year. And it's, uh, I think it's $300,000 that we have to adjust our 10 year plan to say, okay, this 300,000 is going to be put in here next year. And that means that this project that we're going to do three years from now is, is going to be delayed another year. So it, it's definitely a balancing act. Uh, my financial guys, my managers do a great job of that. And, and they're the ones really that tell you, I mean, when my public works manager comes and says, we have to do this today. I know he's he's not it's not he's not blowing smoke. He's telling me we have to do it today. So we have to figure it out. You you have many people in your community that probably come to you with many different issues, and you know, as you just said, you have an un, you have a uh, you have a limited supply of money. You don't have a endless supply of money coming in. You can't run deficits. And I can imagine you're about to head into budget cycles or you're already in the budget cycle where you're making these tough decisions of what needs to happen, what needs to continue on and the needs and wants of your community. How do you pick the winners and losers? Because you have to say who's going to get what they want in this community, whether it be that park upgrade, whether it be that X, Y, or Z issue. And you have to look at every issue and you have to say, okay, we can't do this now. We have to do it four years from now. We can't do this issue now. It has to be two years from now. And then you have to go and sell your budget. I can imagine that being the toughest part because you want everyone to feel like they're getting something from the budget, but not everyone's going to feel like they're going to get something from the budget. Asking the you tough questions, questions here on money. <laughs> you thought this was going to be, a, probably John Mark was like, yeah, it's an easy go lucky conversation. And he's like, whoa. <laughs> That's what, one of the things that I guess we've tried to do is, is the, we used to do budgeting kind of a little ways ahead, try and go, then we did five years. Now we're doing 10 years budgeting. Oh, <clears throat> So the only answer I have to some of those people is say, yeah, you're on the list, but you're not on the list till 
2026 or 2028 or whatever, because here's here's the plan. And, and so that's the only way you can do it because you're absolutely correct. Everybody wants everything now, and that's the society we live in, but you have to be able to stand your ground and say, I understand that, but here's what we think is best for our community. And that's why you elected us. Um, you talk about elections. So I'm going to go on an easier topic now, if that's okay with you, Brad. Sure. So we have one year <laughs> left until the next election. Now, I'm not sure if you're running or running for re-election. I don't want, if you want to say that, you can. If you don't, I'm okay with that as well. But I want to know, because you've done this for so long, you know what it takes to be a good counselor, to be a good mayor. There are people across the province of Saskatchewan right now who are thinking, I, I could be a mayor. I could be a counselor. For you, what should people be doing right now if they're even considering putting their name forward for municipal council in 2024? Well, I would certainly recommend that they, they talk to counselors that are currently in, in place. They come and sit in a meeting to see how <laughs> invigorating it is. Uh, the, the biggest thing I would say is is you have to ask yourself why. Why are you going to be a counselor? Anybody can do it. There's no doubt. Anybody can do it. You really think Same that? Mind. Well, if you're if you're sane and not, I, I can't say anybody, everybody. But if you're sane and rational, if you're if you're not a, you know, fly off the. And some people will say I could never do that, yeah. because if somebody somebody complained to me, I'd punch him in the nose. You know, so you you have to know yourself as a person. But if you're if you're doing it because you think you can help, you can. I'm sure you're going to be successful. If you're doing it because I want to get my street paved, you won't be successful because single issue people or um, if you come in with a preconceived idea, it's it's going to be shot down right away. Um, and and people that are just single issue people, they have no concept of what's good for everybody. The thing that that I would tell people is municipal any politics is painfully slow to get anything done. Painfully, you think, oh well, we'll get this done right away. The the red tape the forms and everything it just takes forever sometimes and it's it's irritating it's frustrating but you have to live with that in small p political life give us a silver lining it's not all slow mundane watching the sausage being made is it like there's probably some good things about municipal politics oh absolutely the things that you can do yourself the things that we can do in our community is is absolutely good and and um the ideas that you can put forward and and work towards sometimes you'll you'll it'll take two or three years to get that project done but it's always positive moving forward and and when the when it's completed there's a tremendous amount of joy in it so self-satisfaction been... or just satisfaction so I've been accused on this show from people who listen and people who have uh, watched the show that I, I traditionally am a negative person when I talk about communities. And I, I want to end on this segment by talking about the accomplishments of Lumsden. So what what are the good things that have happened in Lumsden over your time in municipal politics that you say, you know what, if tomorrow morning I woke up and said, I'm done, I can move on. I can point to this and say I've made a, a impact on my community. If I say I got another 10 years because I want to see this project come through, I, I, I'm I going to be doing it because I want to see this happen for my community. What are the accomplishments that you 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 boast about when you talk to your fellow mayors and councillors from across Saskatchewan about Lumsden? Yeah, I thought maybe one of the questions that you might ask me is what do I enjoy most about about my job that's that's I, I the guess, next one there <laughs> <laughs> the the thing that i when i can say i'm the mayor of lumsden i do that really proudly and i think people i'm very fortunate really fortunate we have a beautiful community uh, scenic is tremendous but we also have a community 
we have a community that's growing, that's developing. As I said before, we're much younger than we used to be. I could say, you know, we built a $20 million wastewater treatment project, and I'm real proud of that. Well, we had to do it. We were forced to do it. We didn't have any choice. So that, was, that wasn't something I did. It was something that just happened, and you had to do it. One of the things that, I, that I'm most proud of is our solar project that we put on to accommodate that wastewater treatment plant. The costs for our community were, are huge, huge. And so we said, how do we try and alleviate some of those costs? And so we put in a solar project, I think is, is um, top drawer. It's, it's as good as it, as it gets in, in, certainly in Saskatchewan and Western Canada, we were told we were the biggest municipal solar project uh, at that time. So it, that's a real accomplishment for me. And I think it's going to pay off for years and years I hope that thinking forward. Oh, I, I I lost you there for two seconds. I'm not sure if it was my internet or your internet, but you may have to say that over again. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that one of the things that I'm most proud of is our solar project that we've built in our community. Uh, uh, we did it for other projects in town that are much smaller. Our, our recycle center was about a $6,000 bill every year, power bill. That power bill now is zero. Now it's going to take us time to pay back that loan and pay back that, that um, solar costs about 12 years. But that's a saving that's going to last our community forever. And so some of the things that we've done in our solar project, I think, is... is um, it's, it's, it's showing leadership, I think, leadership in our community, leadership in our province, and, and I'm real proud about that. I think I'm real pl proud of my council. I've got a young... Oh, did I lose you again? And old male and female, diverse council, very, very positive people. Am I, do I still have you there? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I want to turn to my last segment now, and it's my favorite one, but it's more important now because, I, as I said, I had uh, RM of Lumsden, Dep uh, Councillor uh, Cody Jordanson on, and he said, I need to have someone from Lumsden talk about the great tourism of Lumsden because you guys are doing a fantastic job, and he said that you need to be able to talk about it because he didn't want to step on any toes. So I'm yeah. going to ask the million dollar question because I think everyone, every municipality has a tourism aspect that needs to be promoted. And there's all hidden gems in a lot of uh, municipalities. So for Lumsden, what are some of the hidden gems? What are some of the tourist destinations that people should come and visit yeah. if they're ever in Saskatchewan? Well, we definitely have a great community. Uh, and we got nominated a couple of times on some of the hidden gems and the best places to be and 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 we didn't pay for that there are lots of people who get nominated to pay for it we didn't we didn't go out and solicit that it just happened we, we've got the scenic beauty in Lumsden is tremendous uh, we've got some some um, projects that are going our our duck derby uh, is is 35 years old we, we had our 35th duck derby this year it, it it's a huge success. And who would have ever thought, I mean, we float rubber ducks down the Bell River and raise money for our rink. And it brings thousands of people to town every day, every every year. It, it's a great, great community. And I, when I go out to introduce myself at municipal meetings, I'm saying, I'm Brian Matheson, mayor of Duck Central. And, and so we, we're real proud of that. We, we have a scarecrow festival that's grown. It, it's also in September, right in the fall, I'm saying this year we had, we increased our population by two or three times. It was absolutely crazy that day. People just come for uh, a day in the valley in the fall. It's beautiful. And there's street markets, there's movies, there's fireworks, there's 
pancake breakfast. There's auto, the museum puts on it. It's just a, a real community project and people build scarecrows and put them in their yard. And uh, it's it just a, a community thing. Um, we've got great facilities. Our, our rink is a great rink. Our ballparks are wonderful. We had provincial ball here this year and, and people were gaga about how, how good a facility we have. So that, that's always good. You know, we've got the dog park, the disc golf, the spray pad, we, all those types of things. But the scenic beauty of, of Lumsden is, is worth the trip. And we've got the, the trails all around. The great Canadian trail goes through Lumsden, uh, both walking and on the river, uh, the blue trail. So there's a tremendous amount here. And we've got some of our businesses are just are really, really well known. Um, our clothing store, our Last Mountain Distillery, all sorts of, uh, of great things in our community. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about, about the education program that we have in our, in our schools. We, we have two great schools, elementary and high school, great programs there. So if you're coming to Lumsden, you're gonna have a great educational experience. And, and one thing that people don't know we have a Coppell Valley Nordic Club, which is a, a cross-country ski club, but it's also a biathlon. And, and you don't see it, but it is a tremendous biathlon facility. I think it's been going for eight years now, maybe nine years. And it's comparable to Canmore. Uh, it, it's a great facility and, and people are getting to know it. And it's going to become more and more prominent as the years go on. So I, I, I don't know if that, I certainly haven't hit everything, but those are the Lumsden key ones. It's a fabulous place. So where do you go? Where do you go in town after a stressful day, after a long day of council meetings, after a long day being on the board of SUMA, because I know you're on that as well. Where do you yeah. go in Lumsden to just decompress, to let it all go and just recenter yourself? Because you know, the day after you're going to have to do it all over again and make the community a better place. Well, I, I don't know that I have a special spot. Uh, I'm lucky my daughter's got a dog and I get to walk the dog lots. And, and uh, I, I ride my dog? bike around. What town. type of dog? I got to ask because I'm a dog lover. Oh, what type of dog? She's she's a uh, coon hound dog, a part coon hound, part, uh, I think, part shepherd. Oh. Fabulous dog. <laughs> so I'm going to end on the million dollar question. You've already answered part of it, but I think you can expand on a little bit if possible. And I think every municipal leader knows how to answer this question, but I think it's the most important question. And that is, in your opinion, what makes the town of Lumsden such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Well, I think we're a bedroom community for the city of Regina. There's absolutely no doubt about that. We, people leave here and go to the city every day but they come back here for their community. Uh, our, our rink, our schools, our, our minor sports system, we offer everything here that you, not everything, but most everything here that you can get in Regina. So people, people, uh, they're proud to be from Lumsden. And, and we wanna make sure that they're proud to be from Lumsden and, and so, we had, uh, well, th th that's that's really what it's all about. People are proud to be from here. We're, we're growing younger and and we had a group come in. They want to get a swimming pool going in that. We don't have a swimming pool. They think we should have a swimming pool. They did tremendous work to say, here's what it would cost. Here's how we could do it. Here's, and, and so that now is on our our radar. Will it happen tomorrow? Absolutely not. Will it ever happen? I don't know. But those people have done the work to make it a viable option. Whereas, as lots of people just come and say, well, put in a swim pool. You're the government, you're the council, put in a swim pool. These people went out and did the work themselves and they did a tremendous job. So that's the type of community we have. They're proud of it. It sounds amazing. And um, I want to thank you. 
I want to thank you so much for sitting down and talking about your community and talking about yourself and talking about the town of Lumsden as a whole. Um, it seems like you have a passion for what you do and it seems like you're there to make your community better. So thank you for doing that as well. And uh, I, I'm going to sort of put a little plug in, but I'm going to be visiting the town of Lumsden uh, before I head off to our, the Suma next year. So uh, hopefully we can grab a coffee while I'm there and you can give me a little tour or I can get a little uh, pointers of where I should make sure I stop in the town of Lumsden while I'm there. So thank you so much. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing you here and we'll, we'll lay out the red carpet. We'll have a tour for you for sure. Thank you for joining us today for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Your continued interest in delving deep into the issues that shape our communities across Canada is both inspiring and essential. Now, as we wrap up, it is my hope that you've gained valuable insights into the intricate world of municipal politics from our guest today. Now, if you found this dialogue as engaging as I did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button today. By subscribing, you're not just staying up to date on the latest conversations, but you're also playing a vital role in supporting our endeavor to bring you more meaningful content. Now, we couldn't embark on this journey without your support either. Creating content that sheds light on the issues affecting municipalities requires dedication and resources. Now, if you believe in our mission and want to help us to continue to grow, please consider visiting our support page conveniently linked in the show notes or by visiting crossborderinterviews.ca. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in ensuring that we can keep delivering you the kind of content you've come to expect from us. Now, once again, thank you for being part of this community. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding light on the issues what truly matter to you and to our communities. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.